And good morning, I'm Kirk Mason. And I'm Laura Painter. In just a few hours, the man shot and killed by a Grand Rapids police officer will be laid to rest. 26-year-old Patrick Leo's funeral service will be held at a church in Grand Rapids today. News Channel 3's Amira Austin joining us live in studio with what we could expect. Amira. Good morning, Kirk and Laura. Patrick Leoya's funeral is being held at Renaissance Church of God in Christ in Grand Rapids at 11 a.m. today. We're told the memorial service is open to the public. Civil rights activist Al Sharpton will give the eulogy. The family's attorney Ben Crump and Kent County Commissioner Robert S. Womack are also expected to speak. Patrick Leoya was shot in the back of the head by a Grand Rapids police officer during a struggle after a traffic stop on April 4th. Since GRPD released video of the shooting last week, several protests have been held in Grand Rapids. Just yesterday, the Black Lives Matter Michigan group rallied in support of Leoya's family in Lansing. Protesters marched to the Capitol saying they want the officer to be held accountable for Leoya's death. They also offered their condolences to the family. A lot of times we get to the point where we get desensitized from being in these marches and these rallies. Um, just seeing another brother just being killed in the streets, and it's just overwhelming. I think folks are tired, uh, and the loyal family is hurt, and I just want to send peace and love to them and their family. Again, the funeral service is open to the public, but masks are required for entry. The News Channel 3 team will be at the funeral today. We will also be broadcasting the service live on air and streaming it online at WWMT.com. An emotional day for so many, but especially for the father of Patrick Leoya, as friends and family come to comfort him as he sees his son one final time. In a two-hour service for 26-year-old Patrick Leoya, hundreds got to say goodbye, family, friends, even perfect strangers. Leoya was fatally shot in the back of the head by a Grand Rapids police officer on April 4th. News Channel 3's Trisha McCauley was at that funeral service today. She tells us how family and friends are remembering him. Today, an emotional day for the community laying to rest 26-year-old Patrick Leoya. More than 1,000 people came out to honor Patrick today, who was killed 54 years to the day that Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in Memphis. A two-hour ceremony celebrating the life of Patrick Leoya. To more the horrific and untimely death of our son, brother, nephew, cousin, husband, and father. As a community, Kama community we more the realized potential of life taken too soon. Today was the first time the Leoya family could see Patrick's body since he was shot and killed on April 4th. Patrick's mother cried uncontrollably. His father stared straight ahead, watching family, friends, and strangers stop to pay their respects at their son's open casket. I'm, I'm, I'm really broken. With 950 seats filled plus standing room, the Renaissance Church of God in Christ was packed with people. Brianna Taylor and Eric Gardner's families were in attendance, both killed by police, along with Black Lives Matter activists from across the country. You left us early, Patrick. And we were not able to say goodbye. That, it's not your fault. But you are still gone nonetheless. Please know that we will forever love and we will forever miss you. That we will be strong for you. That we will fight for you. Please. Rest easy. Reverend Al Sharpton gave Leoya's eulogy, focusing mostly on how he died for more than 30 minutes. You're going to run and chase somebody down about some contact. You're going to take a gun out your house and take his life, his children's father, about some contact. Sharpton using the eulogy to call on the Grand Rapids Police Department to release the name of the officer who shot and killed Patrick. Will you stand up for justice? Leoya's casket then wheeled out of the church, draped with the flag of the Democratic Republic of Congo. The Leoya's family home country, a home they fled to escape violence and live in safety. 
Patrick's family describes him as a warm and loving person. He was the oldest sibling and they say the leader of his family. He also loved to watch and play soccer and loved to dance with his siblings. Patrick leaves behind his parents, five siblings and two children. Almost three weeks after Patrick Leoya was shot and killed during a struggle with a Grand Rapids police officer, hundreds converged on the city to pay their respects, many who'd never met him. As Leoya's family mourns his death, a high-profile civil rights leader comes to town, he says, with a plan to prevent what happened in Grand Rapids to ever happen again. News Channel 3's Maria Serrano joins us live in Grand Rapids with more on this emotional day. Maria. Today was the first time Leoya's family got a chance to see his body, you know, after the struggle with police that ended in a Grand Rapids police officer shooting Mr. Leoya. I can tell you they're still calling for the same thing. The family and his legal team want GRPD to release the name of the officer who fired that shot. And they also hope that the case falls on federal hands. More than 1,000 people at the funeral service grieving Patrick Leoya's forever absence. As a community, Kama community we mourn the uh, realized potential of life taken too soon. Hundreds of friends, acquaintances, and strangers offering condolences and paying their respects. During the service, Leoya's family was overcome with intense emotion. While Leoya's mother weeps the death of her son, his father looks down in disbelief. We intend to fight for justice for this family. This is not a cameo appearance. During his eulogy and after, Al Sharpton criticized the Grand Rapids Police Department for not releasing the officer's name. That is a danger to every citizen in this country. It will set a national precedent that police now will not have to be named unless they're charged, which means they can make repeat offenses Al Sharpton says Leoya's case carries national significance and attention. He says the Leoya family's legal team, led by Ben Crump, is demanding that Grand Rapids police reveal his name. Police Chief Eric Winstrom has said GRPD won't release his name unless the Kent County prosecutor files criminal charges against the officer. Justice certainly should first start with naming uh, this officer. <laughs> Sharpton says the team is also calling on the Justice Department to begin a civil rights investigation into Leoya's death. We will not leave this to local prosecutors. As the casket is carried out of the church and driven to a Wyoming cemetery for Leoya's burial, <laughs> family, friends, and strangers wave goodbye one last time. Brianna Taylor and Eric Gardner's families were also in attendance here today. Both were killed by police. I can tell you the next steps is Michigan State Police continues to investigate the case and then it will be forwarded to the Kent County prosecutor.